you know, you got to move on. You know, when things are going your way, uh, life's still going on. You still got a job to do. And um, it's really, you know, simple. You know, you got to learn from your losses and keep going. Can you tell in practice whether guys have, have moved on or not? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we with two days in the preparation, well, more than two days now on the Rams, we on, we got to move forward, get going. We got NFC play, you know, coming up. And we were going to put ourselves in best position to be able to come out and win a game. And, Dwelling on the past is not going to help us. You talked a little bit about it Sunday, but when you went back and watched it again, as far as the pass rush goes, what, what stood out to you is maybe something that you all weren't getting last year that, that worked better? I think the intent um, across the board was really good from the guys and um, us working together with the back end. And I think it just was something that um, everybody kind of just worked off each other. You know, I think me having some success helped, um, you know, some blisters come through. And, I, um, and also, I think some good coverage helped us get to the quarterback. So, I mean, it worked hand in hand. Is that something that you figured would, like when you were going through the preseason, you're like, okay, I think that that might actually happen this year? Or it, it, was that, did that surprise you at some point? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, you always preparing to do the best you can. You want to get to the quarterback. So to be able to see us get there wasn't a surprise to me. It's something definitely that we worked for and, and um, put an emphasis on. But uh, I wasn't say it was surprising. Did you? I mean, I remember last year we were talking towards the end of the season. You're talking about being triple teamed. And mm -hmm. Did you notice that teams were approaching you a little different this year at any point? Or no, obviously one game, but like mm -hmm. on Sunday, did the Saints know you so well? Did you feel like they were approaching you differently? I mean, I think we do a good job of um, putting everybody in position to have success, and however it works out, is however it works out, you know. And um, I think we built it forward across the board, you know, front end to back end to be able to make whatever adjustments we need to have success as a defense. How do you take? tape that you have and kind of get better as a defense moving forward? Like, how do you apply what you learned from that game? Uh, you know, you always want to do a good job self-scouting. Um, if you can't, you know, get better by looking yourself in the mirror, you know, that's that's a problem. So whatever whatever may be good, bad, and different, um, win or loss, you always want to go review the tape and see what things you can do better because there's always something you can do better and some things you can do good. But um, at the end of the day, you got to put it to rest, learn from it, and get ready for the next opponent. You know, uh, they defend the champs for a reason. Um, a lot of talent across the field. They love to run the ball, do a good job, play action, and good job in um, just, you know, keeping the defense guessing. You know, they got stars at every level, you know, from the line to the quarterback, running back to receiver. So people that have been having some success in the league for a long time, and uh, I'm excited. I think it'll be a great challenge for us. Speaking of the line, you know, it's a little beat up. They gave up seven sacks. Is that looking at area to exploit? I mean, I know what changes we've got. I mean, I think every 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 time you go out there um, on the field, you want to get to the quarterback and they want to protect the quarterback, you know. And um, you know, every game is a new game. We gotta give you know them that due respect, you know. As um, you know, we gotta be able to be on our toes versus worrying about you know what they gotta fix. We gotta make sure we got our stuff right. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, whatever happens, gonna happen. And um, I'm sure um, they'll have a plan like we'll have a plan. And you know, you gotta go play the game. Everybody knows how talented they are. Were you surprised when you looked at the tape about that they didn't have the greatest game last week? Uh, no, it's the NFL. Every team can any team get beat, get beat any given Sunday, and um, and uh, but you know, with teams talented as that, you know, profitable as that, you know, they they definitely gonna want to get back to work and you know, to put some good out on the field, just like us. You know, we had a good showing and we came out a little short, and uh, we hungry to get you know get get on the winning track as well. So I think it'll be a really, really highly competitive game, and um, I'm I'm ready to play. How much different is the routine going? Obviously, East Coast team. Uh, you know, now you're going out to the West Coast. So, like, what what kind of changes are your normal routine going through that? Uh, um, you know, I try not to get too caught up in it. You know, the game got to be played at the end of the day, whether I like the routine or not. I got to make sure I'm ready. You know, on time to kickoff happens. So, I mean, however I feel about the routine, it really don't matter. Um, we just got to be ready to play the game, and uh, I'm excited to go to uh, have the opportunity to play. <coughs> How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. So uh, let's just start here. What happened? With, like, what did you see on the block field goal? Obviously, 63 is you know pretty long distance, aim, but what did you see where things went wrong? I don't say anything went wrong. That I wouldn't say that at all. I mean, you're kicking a 63-yard field goal. It's going to be a lower trajectory kick because it has to travel further. Um, I thought our old line did a great job protecting. Give credit to New Orleans. You know, Turner got his hands up. And based on how things happen, where the flight line is of the ball, they are long rangey players. And Coach Rizzi called a good rush, and they just got their hands up. If you watch the film, like you guys all do, 
There was no penetration. They did a great job getting their hands up. Ku had great contact on the football. Our protection was great all night. Our specials did a great job with our operation, Mike, all game. And fortunately, it just didn't go our way that one, that play. So, for, you know, give credit to New Orleans on that, getting their hands up on the ball. Kickers usually have a sense of whether or not they were, they were going to make a kick, you know, the second it leaves their foot. Did Ku think that, you know, doesn't get blocked? Did Ku think he had the distance on it? Or, yeah, or do you not even have that conversation with him? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, he made great contact with the football. But the end result was it wasn't a, we didn't make the field goal. So we're moving on with that one. How much in your career have you seen? We saw Hackett go, try the 64-yarder. How much in your career have you seen that sort of max distance in those situations increase? I mean, I don't feel like you would have, 15 years ago, you would have seen guys trying a 63, 64-yarder. It's just kind of. Yeah, I mean, you have strong, stronger leg kickers. You know, there's kickers back then. I mean, there was one, I want to say, preseason Denver of like 20, like 20. 2012, I believe. Was, I can't, I forget the date, but there was a 64 or 65 yarder made in the preseason. I want to say this was be actually before Prater made his, his longest one. So date that one back before Prater was a kicker with Denver um, when he made that versus Tennessee for that, that at the time was the record long field goal. Somebody made it in the preseason. So there's always been stronger late kickers, but I think more and more if you try, there's more attempts and ever since the record's been broken and you see more and more kickers getting that opportunity, whether it's within practice, trying it more in field goals uh, during preseason. And then you have guys that are bigger, stronger, faster now when you're trying those, op when you're getting the opportunity to try those type of kicks. How often have you worked from that distance from that distance? Yeah, from, from 60 plus, you, I mean, you guys have sure I mean, I've, I've seen Kuv make that field goal before. I've seen him make that field goal in practice multiple times. So those are things that we have to work. Us as coaches, we want to put our players in positions, you know, so they can be prepared before the opportunity presents itself. So it was a no-brainer once the personal foul happened and they were putting the ball down there, we we're going to kick that field goal. This might be, a, like, you know, in track, like there's always the speed, you know, getting mm -hmm. faster, getting faster. What do you think is the limit? For a field goal right now? I mean, what, what, what is that number? It's, I can't answer that question. It's by kicker. It's by kicker, it's by the situation, it's by the, at, the current um, stadium that you're playing, the atmosphere. If you're playing in indoors, if you're playing outdoors, is it December, January, you know, beginning of the season? How your kicker's feeling, how you feel about your protection. There's a lot of different variables when it comes to that. It comes to play. The wind factor, obviously, that's a big, big case in what's going on with that. And then the, the part of the game, when it comes to if it's a game winner or is it the first drive of the game. You obviously you don't want to try a 63 yarder on, on the first drive of the game and it's 10 minutes left in the first quarter to give the team great field position. I have a minute, let me refresh that. Like, what do you think the limits are? Because, like, you, you look at sprinters right now, right? Mm -hmm. like, that limit's like maybe like nine. Four nine three, you know, like that's where they've gotten to. Where do you think kickers have gotten to? Where it is that outer range? Like, you know, I know there are other variables, but I'm wondering if there's like, you know, is seventy doable? Is seventy five? Like, do you think seventy? Where do you think that limit is? Because this is your, you know, expertise. And there was a sixty eight yarder made last year, correct? So, huh? That was sixty eight, wasn't it? Yeah, sixty six, sixty eight. <laughs> it's up there, you know. But I've seen kickers make it from seventy. I've seen kickers make it from 69. So as as time goes on, you have to do it in the game too. So you can see that at practice, but it ha being able to do it in the game with real pressure, real stress, being in those stress-like situations, that's when it comes down to. When it comes to. What's the longest you've ever seen Coop make a field goal? Uh, 65, 66. How do you think that Avery did last week? I thought Avery did a great job with decision making and getting vertical with the football and did a great job with his catch mechanics, catching the ball clean and making the first guy miss and getting the vertical with the football and breaking tackles. And he continues to improve. Do you have, uh, I mean, I know I remember, I guess it was last week, we talked about Cordero and, you know, depth chart, whatever. Mm -hmm. Is, I mean, is he going to be doing that every week? Like, is that, what the plan is, or is that going to, is that on a week to week? It's always week to week. Our roster is always week to week. Who Who's going to be on the 50, 48 on game days week to week? It's based on teams that we're playing, based on the coverage units that we're going against, based on what type of return we want to run that week. Um, but 
CP, Avery, you know, Keith, OZ, Bernie. Uh, those guys will always be a part of the mix when it comes to that. And again, too, based on certain teams, we might get certain kicks. So that's why we have three different guys back there that could catch the ball, just depending on who gets the football. You look at week two last year, you know, week two last year we played uh, Tampa, I believe. We had Avery back there, we had CP back there. And who ended up getting most of the returns that game? It didn't matter who was deep, but Avery got most of the returns that game. So we have those returners back there, and it's based on wherever they want to kick it. That guy gets the opportunity to catch the ball to get vertical, and the other 10 guys, their responsibilities to make sure that they win play side number and get their leverage so we can get vertical with the football. Was there, was there conversations after Damian got hurt of not having CP back there because it was going to mean much more of a work, I mean, of a workload from in the run game with him? Well, as the game goes on and there are injuries, there's always conversations about you know, being able, you know, the real reality of it, we had two running backs. So there's always conversations about that. But at the end of the day, it's all putting our team in the best position to win the football game. And however that shakes out, whether CP is the returner, AV is the returner, whatever, however that works out. But that's the first play on offense. That's the mindset that we have as a team. You know, before they're kicking the ball to us, we have opportunity, if they give us opportunity to return the football, to gain first downs for our offense. And that is the first play of our offense. So we're looking at putting the best 11 out there when it comes to the return game. That answers your question. Yeah. You have a couple of, 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 of uh, rookie guys in uh, Nate Landman and Troy Anderson not yes, sir. playing on defense, but really featuring you know, on, on your units. How have they kind of adjusted quickly? Because it looks like they're getting a lot of responsibility. Well, Scott, it, they're adjusted well. I, I believe they've done a great job. And then kind of going back to like Mike's question, I believe those guys, when they're in the coverage units, they're in the first play of defense, and then they're in the return units, they're in the first play of offense. They've adapted well. They've worked really hard both on and off the field with extra meetings, as opposed to, I mean, there's a lot of guys, too. I could add a number of guys. We talk about AK, D'Angelo. Um, you add Avery to the mix, um, having special teams meetings with those guys and spending extra time on making sure they understand the game plan, understand their techniques within the game plan, and being able to execute their assignments. I'm excited for those guys to continue to grow and you know, just going out there today and being able to work on some things and get better each and every day. But they take a lot of pride in their craft, and it's a great opportunity come Sunday versus the Rams. How much of your weekly prep is anticipating how your opponent's going to react to whatever you've just done and trying to get, you know, stay ahead of that curve? Yeah, sure. That's a good question. You know, obviously, going into a new season, right, there's always wrinkles that offenses, defenses put in, and you want to see or anticipate potentially how they're going to counter what you're doing. So there's obviously a part of that. There's obviously a part of understanding what the defense is trying to do in their own right and what they're really good at. And obviously, this defense is really good. So they're going to stay strong where they're strong and understanding how to attack whatever, if there is any weakness, but also staying you know, true to what we do. Uh, in general. So there is a balance of that, understanding what their pitch may be to try to take away what we do, and then obviously countering it to what we may uh, we may do to them. Sean McGregor was saying yesterday that you were kind of the through line in some ways between him and Arthur. Like, how did you connect them? Phone call? Text? No. I mean, obviously, I've known Sean a long time. Um, you know, obviously, consider him a close friend. Uh, and Art, I've known longer. And so one of those, with those two personalities, I thought they would be a, um, you know, not just football mind, but uh, by how they conduct their life. I thought that was a perfect um, setup for those guys to talk, not just football, but just obviously being in the same role. And, you know, obviously you can ask them how the conversation had been, but I think they're pretty easy, uh, just knowing both those personalities. What do you mean by the personalities? Just who they are as guys, you know, what they stand for, um, how they go about their business, how they believe football. Um, how they run their teams and things of that nature. I'm sure at that level, when you're a head coach, uh, there's questions that come up or there's thoughts that you've had and other head coaches you can bounce things off of. Um, but again, I'm not privy to what they've talked about. It's just, I knew those, those two uh, individuals would probably have um, a decent connection. When you look at Drake London and what he was able to do on Sunday, how much of that could you anticipate especially since he didn't practice for two weeks versus how much that was maybe even surprising. For yeah, like we talked about last week, I think for me, anybody, right, who gets a helmet, like we talked about last week, is we expect a certain level of execution standard and detail. 
And so Drake got his number called. He was out there. He played uh, a number of snaps. Um, there was no ceiling floor of what we thought. Uh, again, we try to hold everybody to the same standard of expectation. And obviously, when the ball came to Drake, he made some plays. But that's just like everybody else. There's other guys who stepped into roles um, who saw increased playing time because of the flow of the game or because of injury or because of the personnel groupings. And again, it's one of those things for us. You're only allotted so many players up on offense and defense on game day. So those guys are anticipated and expected right, to obviously contribute if their name or number is called. And so no different than Drake or anybody else. What has he done, I guess, early on in his career that maybe stood out to you? Well, he's taken, I, I think it's just like what we talked about with Kyle last year and some of these younger players and obviously the rest of the offense. Uh, professional approach, come in. Uh, understand that you have a job to do, which is mental and physical, um, and go about your work a certain way. And that's really not just him because he's a rookie. That's just anybody of the expectation that we have on, on our side of the ball. This is an Aaron Donald adjacent question, but not about, oh, great. Our, not about our job. <laughs> yeah. Going back, high school, all, all the way back, can you remember one guy who wrecked your day offensively in a game who was just like, we could have. It's that one guy. We were fine, except he killed us. I mean, now we're just bringing up nightmare scenarios for me. Sorry. Negative. No, nah, look, Aaron Donald to me, um, obviously, I don't, I, everybody said everything you can about Aaron Donald, right? Not just coaches in this league, players, fans. Um, he's a unique talent. He's special. But I will say this, too. The way the rest of the defense plays, um, it's a fast unit that understands what they're trying to do defensively. They play with great eyes. Um, when they're in their zones, if they decide to play more man, they got man players on defense. Um, and to me, like when you watch that defense go, there's no doubt 99 is obviously a vital piece uh, to what that defense does. But the other pieces that play with them, they play a certain level of expectation standard of defense that when you watch it on film, you, you grow to appreciate. And you get to see those players make big time plays. Um, and each one of those guys, from the back end to the linebackers to the front, you can see they their game excels uh, at the highest moments, and that's why that defense, in my opinion, plays so well. So you don't necessarily start you, – you don't go into the week starting with 99 and trying to build around from that. You take a more local one. Well, again, you know me and Coach. We're never going to give away game plan ideas. 99's a good player. Like, we all know that. Uh, but they, to that point, uh, it's a disservice to say that, you know, there's other players in that defense that we respect. Um, there are 11 that show up in their different personnel packages. What they do X and O wise, um, I don't think it's enough credit. Um, yeah, they have good players, but they put those players in positions to be successful. And obviously you win a Super Bowl that way. Um, for, so for me, when I look at that defense, you start with the individual pieces, their strengths and weaknesses, but then you watch them play as a unit. It's pretty impressive. Do you have any updates to the status of Damian Williams heading into Sunday? Those would be for Coach and Damian. No, I do not. I want to go back to the Misery thing for a second. Why not? Because, yeah, I, I mean, look, because it's people, fun. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. I know that all those things are coming to me. So, yeah. <laughs> oh. Was there, like, when you were in your playing days, was there one player that you were making your specific life misery? Look, in the NFL, I was carrying a clipboard. So, anybody out there, I was like, man, luckily it's not me out there getting hit. Um, no, there, there's nothing that, that comes into mind like that. Look, when you go out there as a player, the reality is you put that helmet on, you're trying to execute your job. Um, at your highest ability. If you're thinking about anything else, about the other guy, or like you're going to have some issues uh, in terms of that. You need to have a clear focus, and that focus needs to be how do I execute my job, not necessarily how great maybe someone else is um, at that time. Now, understanding right what that other player does, obviously that's important, but you have to have a singular focus. I don't know how much you uh, want to go into this. But probably nothing. Probably. <laughs> yeah, right? If you're going to lead with that, I, I'm going to probably punt I, the question. At this I, point. I've learned that. Yeah, I got I, you. I you got to do your job. It's self-awareness. Yeah, no doubt. Um, as you watch film on the Rams defense this past week, did you were you guys able to pick up things that the Bills were able to do that perhaps you could somewhat replicate, or was it just a bad, a bad off day for the Rams? Yeah, I wouldn't even consider that. Uh, the way I looked at that defense and the way they played against Buffalo, look, you go. The game was tied at halftime. You know, there's things that happened during that game that happen in every NFL game. There's a play here or there. Um, on offense, defense, that can determine outcomes at times. Look, I get the final score. I get the outcome. I put that film on. That defense is playing. And they play with a certain attitude. They play with a certain uh, ability to change the game. 
And it's not just one player. There's multiple players. And when they play together like they have and what they've shown week in, week out, it is a very, very good team. So, you know, I'm sure uh, Buffalo gets their credit. At the end of the day, we're a different football team, so we have to approach it, what our strengths and weaknesses are, and play to our strengths, um, and do what we do, what we think is best for us. How did Damian getting hurt so early alter maybe some of what you guys were trying to do? Look, at the end of the day, like, like I told you, we go in with a plan that everybody has the potential to play. So regardless if it's injury or whatever else, uh, we have backup plans of backup plans throughout the plan to make sure that guys are ready to play, and we don't skip a beat. And again, I thought you saw not just in the running back spot, but other positions that guys stepping up, great communication on the sideline. So we try not to dwell. We move on. Uh, we evolve. And um, first and foremost, making sure the player is okay. But for us, from coaching standpoint, is how do we now get right, ourselves in the best position, regardless of who's in the game? Okay, maybe this is me assuming too much, but I'm assuming Cordero getting 22 carries a week is not exactly what you guys are. Yeah, I but we don't go in, I mean, no trade secrets here. We're not going in saying he only gets eight carries and he gets sick. At the end of the day, you know, there is no, we go in with the idea of who's ever in the game, regardless of how you're in, we have a standard in which we want to play. And if it's your opportunity, you get a chance to do it, let's roll. So you guys punted on fourth and one, obviously, you looked off. You could have obviously ran with CP to get a first down. What was the thought process going into punting? versus maybe just rushing to get the first down. What was the thought process? Yeah, again, game time, in-game decisions, I won't, I won't discuss that. But again, obviously there's plans for certain situations and then we think what's best. And obviously Coach Smith is uh, the head coach for a reason. And then we go as, uh, as he says. With, with, the, uh, the, with, with the two new starters on the interior offensive line, how do you feel like they did individually and as working with the starting five? Yeah. yeah, again, as we go through this whole process, um, you know, each player, I, I, don't, I don't look at it as, well, he's young or it's a new, like we've practiced since the off season through training camp. Um, we understand, we try to put these guys in the best position during practice to press them, to give them some stress, to pressure them, to hopefully get them ready for a game. And so obviously it was our goal as coaches and it's their goal as players to be ready to play. Um, so again, like I said, whoever's out there, we have a certain level of standard and expectations, just as us coaches have for ourselves, and it's our goal each week to meet it. But when there's tables on the line, they do work so much as a unit. Obviously, they sometimes seem a little fractured, disjointed. Were you comforted by how they sort of all played together? And yeah, yeah, there was. Again, I will say this, and I, I've said this before. You know, I, I know people at times look at certain position groups and they say, "Well, how do they play?" Like, for instance, right in the run game. Like, it does take all 11 in the run game to be successful. People automatically might point to the back or the O line. The reality is, receivers and quarterbacks in the checks and the balance system is just as important as everybody else. Same in the pass game, right? People will point to sacks and say, well, maybe it's the O line. The reality is, in the pass game, right, to have a successful pass play, it takes all 11. So the way that we look at this is not like pointing out certain skill positions or just positions in general. It is how do we play together as a unit? And so for us, right, O-line or anybody else, there's a certain level of syncness that goes with all those groups. And that's how we approach it. When you have, uh, I want to go back to positionless things, which I feel like you are. Sure. I do. No, I, love I, love I, love I mean, CP, <laughs> positionless. Checklist, we're good. I mean, you know, that's we have we all have goals in life, right? No doubt. No. Uh, when you're facing, but when you're an offensive guy, you're facing a defense that has a guy that they'll move around like they move Jalen around, or like the Saints theoretically move Tyron around and probably move around fast. How does that change how you approach something, maybe offensively? Yeah, I mean, there's there's different ways you can look at it. For us, right, it goes back to understanding the structure of the defense and what they're trying to accomplish each and every play. Then it goes ultimately back to what we do offensively and how we execute. Um, again, they have 11 guys. They can line them up however they need to, to what they feel is the best way to be successful. For us, we have to understand, right? And that's why between the series and things of that nature are so important for the adjustments, understanding what defenses are trying to do to us, but also combating that with, all right, understanding what we're trying to accomplish offensively. So regardless of Jalen's inside, outside, any of their pieces are moving around, right? We have to understand structures of defense um, and why we're trying to do what we're doing. So it ultimately comes back to us.